All right, so we are back here talking about uh, solving for engineering design properties of a pipe system for a given fluid. And in the last video, I kind of gave an overview of the different variables that we are thinking about in these kinds of problems. That includes the uh, pipe, the, the sorry, the fluid properties, the density and viscosity, and then the pipe properties, which is the material, and then the other things that vary from one problem to another are going to be the diameter, the flow rate, and the uh, head loss that happens in the pipe. The loss is due to friction. In the last example we looked at how you could do the head loss uh, calculation using the uh, Moody chart here. So now I'm going to do a, a new problem where we are going through the uh, and finding the flow rate. So when we talked about the different kinds of problems we said that the first the first possibility is that it could be a fluid property and that's rare because most of the time in a real engineering system the fluid is going to be known its properties have already been measured many times uh, likewise the pipe material that's going to be known and have already been measured so the things that vary mostly from one problem to another are these last three and so we did the head loss and now we're going to do flow rate and we said the head loss is the easiest because the the amount of energy losses here depend on the friction factor and the friction factor depends on Reynolds number and relative roughness. All right, so in the case of head loss, we can compute the relative roughness and the Reynolds number straight away. And so that makes it straightforward to solve. When you don't know the flow rate, if that's the unknown you're trying to find, then you don't know the velocity either and that means you don't know the Reynolds number. And so that means you don't know the friction factor. So all these unknowns. <laughs> Uh, but thankfully these problems can still be solved without too much trouble if you know how. So let's talk about how you would do that here. So first thing that to do is we're going to solve for the flow rate. That's what we want to find. And so again we don't know the velocity. Uh, if we rearrange the Darcy-Weisbach equation, which you know its most common form is written like this, FL over D v squared over 2g. If you rearrange this and solve for the velocity, it looks like this. And then if you then solve for the flow rate, where you use pi d squared over 4 for the area, you can rearrange this and solve for flow rate. And so this is really, these are all really the same equation, just written, you know, this is the most common form you see it. This is solving for velocity, and this is solving for flow rate. So I have this version here just as a to help make it a little bit easier. Don't, there's no need to try to memorize all these equations, but just remember that this equation is the same as that one if you were looking it up. Okay, so here we're going to know the head loss. The last one we didn't know, and we'll know the diameter, and then we're trying to find Q. So the thing that we don't know also here is going to be the, the friction factor. All right, and so again, in this situation, we don't know the um, Reynolds number, but we can directly compute the value for epsilon over D, the relative roughness. Uh, because we know the pipe diameter and we'll know the material so we can get this variable and the other variable then that, that affects this value of the friction factor is uh, is the Reynolds number okay so the way that we are gonna that I would suggest you <laughs> solve these problems is to assume it's what's called you know completely turbulent again that is the scenario in the Reynolds in the sorry in the Moody chart where you uh, are over here on the flat part. You see these lines all get flat on the right hand side of this dashed line. This is what's called complete turbulence. This is when the boundary layer thickness is significantly less than the relative than the roughness height. The roughness height, okay, and so they all kind of flatten out. And so what that means is that it's there's a value over here you can look up for the complete uh, what's called fully turbulence or complete turbulence here. Um, where these flatten out. <clears throat> and so if you know E over D, then you can see that the, the value of the friction factor here at, at say this point and at this point, the friction factor that you read off on the left side is going to be the same because the lines are flat. So we want to, if we assume we're over here on the flat part of the lines, it makes life a little easier. Uh, if it's not true, then we can usually solve it with one iteration, maybe two. Okay. Uh, but these, these can become more difficult than the head loss problem because you may have to iterate, meaning you have to do more calculations. It's very easy to do this with the computer if you're doing it by hand. This is That's what I'm showing how to do in this video here. Okay, so again, this is a version of the uh, of the Darcy-Weisbach equation we're going to use. So we get E over D. We're going to assume we're in the flat part here in the what's called fully turbulent. 
And again, that term can be a little bit confusing because we say it's turbulent if it's above 4,000. Uh, that's those are two different meanings. Okay, so we're we're in the turbulent part if we're above a Reynolds number of 4,000. But uh, this is in the what's called complete turbulence when it's got the small boundary layer on the right of the Moody chart. Okay, so we assume we're there, and then we can then look up a value for f for that flat part of the curve. Once you've got a value for f, then you can just plug it in here to get q. Uh, then of course you have to go and check your work. Whenever you make an assumption, you got to make sure the assumption is reasonable. So once you have Q, you can compute the Reynolds number, either get the velocity first and then Reynolds, or you can rearrange the Reynolds number with a Q in it. And then you need to go back and, and look up the value of F for that Reynolds number and make sure that you're in the flat part of the curve. If you aren't, then you will have to look up the new value for the friction factor and um, and then repeat these steps until they don't change, until the value you assume here for friction factor is the same as what you compute for friction factor at the end. Okay, so let's do an example here. So find the discharge capacity or the amount of flow rate that is possible from a three meter rough concrete pipe that is carrying water at 10 Celsius. Okay, so this one is in metric units and here we've got a concrete pipe. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to have to look up the um, value for rough concrete for the roughness height and then we're going to have to look up the properties for water at 10 Celsius. We're also going to need the value for G and so this one is in metric so 9.81 meters per second squared. Diameter here, this is a big old pipe, 3 meters. <laughs> That's very tall. Uh, large pipes often are made out of concrete. This is cheaper. Um, the roughness height then if we go to our you need to find a table of roughness heights and go look that up and so we have a supplemental data file you can use for that and so that is 0 0.6 millimeters if you use metric here for this one for rough concrete pipe okay and then we have the uh, kinematic viscosity which has density and regular viscosity in it at 10 Celsius that comes out to be a little bit different than it is at 20 at 20 it's 10 to the minus sixth almost exactly in here it's going to be just a little bit more viscous because it's uh, because it's a little bit colder sorry not, not minus second 10 to the minus sixth and that's in meter squared per second and then uh, we're told here in this one that the allowable head loss is 2 meters per kilometer of pipe, and so that means the head loss will be 2 meters when the length is equal to 1,000 meters, 1 kilometer. Okay, So we have D and head loss and length, we have our fluid properties, we have G, and then we have uh, the roughness height. Okay, So really, again, you've got this kind of cookbook that you can follow. I encourage you to make sure you understand what the, why the these steps are relevant and why to use them and not just follow it but you can just pretty much follow it so I will write it out step by step so first thing is to get the relative roughness and so E over D 0 0.6 uh, millimeters divided by 3,000 so 3 meters which is 3,000 millimeters and that gives us a value of 0 0.0002 dimensionless Okay, 0.6 millimeters divided by 3 meters, which is 3,000 millimeters. Relative roughness. Number two, we're going to assume it's in the complete turbulence. Okay. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to write that down. It's just something to keep in mind. And so then the next thing we do is we're going to go either to the Moody diagram or... Uh, if you're in the complete turbulence regime, you can use the von Karman equation uh, and plug it in, and we showed that a few pages back in the notes. Uh, so you can plug it in there directly, or you can look it up in the Moody chart, whatever is easier for you. And so I am going to do this with the Moody chart here, and so let's do that again. So here we've got E over D is 0 0.0002 which is this number here on the uh, Moody chart. So it's this line, and this one is convenient here, makes it easier for me. It's right on top of this line here, which if we follow it over, you can see here that that is just below the 0.015. And so again, this, these are both uh, X and Y axis here. These are like log scales. And so here at 0 0.08, uh, 0 0.09, 0 0.01, and so you, when you're in between these numbers, you, you got to make sure you know what the lines are. So 0.01, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.01, 0 0.09, 0 0.01, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.
and then each of these is, uh, is a 0 0.001 jump in between here. So this is 0 0.01, 0 0.011, 0 0.012, 0 0.013, 0 0.014, and 0 0.015. And so you just you know always want to double check that you're counting right. And so that means this point is 0 0.014. All right, and we can read that off. So f is 0 0.014 in the uh, so for Reynolds is you know greater than in that situation that's going to be true if the Reynolds number is again we're looking here at 0 0.02 the dash line if you're to the right of this dash line or if you're really close to it so about right in there which is a Reynolds number of uh, about 6 times 10 to the 6th okay if you're bigger than that then this assumption is going to be reasonable if it's smaller than that one then what you have to do uh, when you go back and compute it later, if you find out that the Reynolds number is more like here, then you would need to go back to this line and you know read it there and then read off and say it's actually closer to 0.017 for F. And you then follow the logic through and make sure that you get the same number for the friction factor that you compute as what you assumed. So here we assume complete turbulence and that gives us this for the friction factor. Now we have to follow this through and make sure that the actual friction factor given that assumption is uh, is equal to 0.014 for that to be right. All right, so next step here is step four and that is gonna be to compute the uh, Reynolds number and the velocity, so V from our equation on the last page, 2G HL D over FL uh, square rooted, and I'm computing that this time here, and so we get 2 times a 9.81 meters per second squared, and the head loss we said was 2 meters per kilometer of pipe, so you can see that you get the 2 meters up there and the kilometer down there. The D was three meters, and F we just looked up for our assumed complete turbulence is 0.014, and then L for uh, this one is a thousand meters again per kilometer of pipe. So you can see that all these units are meters, and and then we got a second there. So this is going to be in units of 2.9 meters per second. Okay, so this will give us units of meters per second for velocity. Then we get our Reynolds number from that. So dV over nu. And so d here is 3 meters. And v we got was 2.9 meters per second. And then nu we got is 1.306 times 10 to the minus 6th meters squared per second so we can see that those will all cancel out and it'll be dimensionless and we get 7 times 10 to the sixth okay that's a Reynolds number and so now is kind of the moment of truth now we have a Reynolds number so we made an assumption of what the friction factor was assuming the Reynolds number was bigger than 6 times 10 to the sixth and we can see 7 times 10 to the sixth is just slightly bigger than that one so that means that our assumption here is going to be reasonable okay and so again how do we know that because this will not always be true don't don't just say it's this because that's the next step in the example I looked at so in this example it worked out that we didn't have to iterate because we were on the right hand side of this dashed line or we were very close to the dashed line you know they, the dashed line it's still pretty like looking at this one here things haven't really changed much from there uh, over to here but uh, if you're close to the dashed line or to the right of it, you're good. And so here at 7 times 10 to the 6th and 0.02, we're still very much, uh, very far from the next line up, which would be at a, a friction factor of 0.015. So we're very close to 0.014. And so that means that our assumption was reasonable. Okay, so we're, we're not going to ever be within better than 1% on a, a problem like this. That's that's the best we could hope for. So um, if our friction factor is basically equal to 0.014, we're good. So check assumption, which we just did, about F using Reynolds. And we got that F is still equal to 0.014. 0.014, my writing isn't great there. 
and yes we're good okay so that means we don't have to do anything else if we got a new value then we would start with this one and go back to step four so now if we let's say we got that it was 0.015 we would then take this go back to step four compute v and then compute reynolds and then compute f again and it should give us 0.015 if it was the right assumption and again you shouldn't ever have to really do this more than twice more that iteration more than twice so you get f you do it again and do it again and then it should not be changing by more than uh, the, the two significant figures okay it should be if you if you follow that procedure now if you just randomly guess numbers for f until you find the right one that can take you a lot longer so it's important to use this guess back here uh, if you want to get closure more quickly all right so the, the last thing we need to do here this gives us the velocity we we're asked for the flow rate so we now need to get so in a given problem you may have to do a little bit more work using an energy balance or you may need to compute flow rate like here and so q is va so we set our velocity is 2.9 meters per second and then we have pi over 4 d squared to get the area and multiply that by the velocity to get the flow rate and so I got that that's 20.5 cubic meters per second that's our flow rate um, another way so I mentioned how you could use the von Karman equation instead so let's go ahead and, and look at that one as an alternative approach alternative for F calculation as opposed to if you don't like looking numbers up in the Moody chart if you'd rather do a formula uh, the von Karman equation says 1 over the square root of F is equal to 2 log of 3.7 over epsilon over D this is the theory that von Karman developed to get the friction factor for the fully turbulent case so these those straight lines are all based on uh, solving this equation so you can rearrange it. again it's typically written in this format with the 1 over the square to f but if you solve that for f this is f to the minus 1 half and so f is equal to 2 log of 3.7 over e over d whole thing uh, to the negative 2 power if you <coughs> solve it that way and so this is the relative roughness in here and if we do that then we get f is equal to uh, 2 log of 3.7 over 0. 0.0002 whole quantity to the negative 2 power and I get that it's 0. 0.0137 so we can see you know this gives us the appearance of being more accurate but in reality 0. 0.014 this is as close as we can hope for again these are based on viscosity and relative roughness all these other factors that are going to be slightly unknown so you know we can only hope to really be two significant figures but you can see that this gives us the same answer either way so you could have done this one uh, this is only true for the fully turbulent for these straight lines in the moody chart okay so if you want to you can either use the straight line to read off the F or you can use that equation whichever one you think is easier once you get to the left of this dashed line though the von Karman equation uh, is gonna you know it's gonna be for this flat part these flat parts of the curve so you will underestimate the friction factor if you use that equation you have to solve for the um, using Swami Jane or um, the Colebrook equation in that case but uh, but either way you can use the equation or the Moody chart to get F and this is how you do it um, when you're trying to find the flow rate